Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, being here. Uh, my name is Melody. Um, I will be moderating today for um, the topic of exchange. And today we have uh, six panelists who are uh, either are operating exchanges or are working in the exchange industry. So uh, I'll kick off by having everyone introduce yourself. You have uh, 30 seconds each. So tell us where you're from, what you're doing, and are you centralized or decentralized? Um, thanks, Melody. So hi everyone, um, this is Bowen Wang, uh, co-founder of DDX and Hydro Protocol. So we are, we are de a decentralized exchange. Um, I put this in simple word, we are, uh, we are a wallet to wallet exchange on Zero-X pr protocol and also Ethereum. So right now we are number one in transaction volume in 24 hours for the last three months on Zero-X uh, ecosystem. Uh, and we are based in Beijing. Hi, my name is Tobin McComas. I'm with Open Finance Network. We are based in Chicago in the US. Uh, in short, we are going to be the first SEC compliant security token trading platform when we launch in about eight hours. Uh, so what are you doing here? For us. <laughs> um, yes, and uh, fingers crossed that that goes well. Um, today, I'd say we're kind of a hybrid uh, a model with um, uh, off-chain uh, matching, on-chain settlement from a decentralization standpoint. Uh, Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Chan from Coping Hood. And uh, Coping Hood is a centralized exchange and we charge zero fee. So uh, we, our exchange have been online for seven months and last month we rank around uh, 20th globally. Yeah, so, uh, and because of we charge zero fee, so we also provide the ICO service to uh, the companies. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hello, my name is Pavel. Uh, I'm founder and CEO at Best Trade. So we are aggregator of crypto exchanges. Uh, what we do, we uh, provide our end users with the best trade across the exchanges uh, to perform the exchange. And uh, also we have software as a service uh, solutions for payments, for ICOs, for crypto games, etc. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Daniel. I come from Chains Exchange, and it is a centralized exchange. And actually we are quite a new exchange. We just launched uh, in this month. And also uh, we are the world's first use-focused exchange. And also it's centralized, and we can support all kinds of uh, use mainnet air jobs. So welcome to here. Hello, my name is Miko, and I'm a co-founder at Evercoin Exchange. Uh, I hate the words decentralized exchange. I actually think that you cannot decentralize exchange, so it's meaningless, because you can't exchange with yourself, so you're obviously exchanging with another party, and when you exchange with another party, you have to come to a location to exchange, and that is where, where it's being centralized. So I think decentralized exchange is not meaningful. Evercoin is a non custodial exchange, meaning we don't hold your funds, we allow you to hold your own funds. You hold your own private key, that's what I think is meaningful. Great. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, Miko, um, you know, landed with a really interesting topic. So today, um, we will, I will suggest we uh, take apart an exchange. The so exchange is made from very different components. Um, so we want to go through every each one of the component and think about how we, uh, what that means to centralize or decentralize, and how decentralization technology can improve um, each of these components. So I think we can start with, um, should we start with the order book and match uh, matching engine? I think that's something that is very essential. So exchanges, you maybe um, um, Pavel, you can explain to everyone what that is. Uh, and what is the, you know, what is being used um, in exchange right now? Yes, yeah, so the order book is just the list of the interest of buyers and sellers, which is stored in the exchange. And Paolo, the can, you, can you talk into the mic? Uh, yes, yeah, so the order book is just the list of the interest of buyers and sellers, which is stored by the exchange, and the matching engine in the, is the actually algorithm that matches them together and performs the trade. So, uh, speaking about uh, order book, uh, Zero X uh, has uh, actually uh, that can, uh, some some uh, products like the Dex, for example. They have off-chain order book, but on-chain uh, um, 
uh, matching engine, and uh, well, centralized solutions they have both on the uh, just uh, just centralized, let's say, under their control. Right. So, uh, anybody want to chime in? Um, whether your exchanges are doing uh, or thinking about a decentralized part of the, you know, order book or, or, or matching engine, and why would you want to put on uh, a decentralized technology? I'm I'm going to say this, which is, as soon as you have miners operating <laughs> an exchange, you have asymmetry of information, which means that a miner can actually take a big order and they can front run the order, right? So to me, like decentralizing your order book makes no freaking sense and nobody should do it. Um, okay, anybody else have that? Uh, any, do we all agree? Yeah, I, 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 would, I would maybe chime in on, on the benefits of, of kind of the peer to peer or wallet to wallet model, right? So as we think about the efficiencies that can be gained, the lack of, of costs associated with that, the elimination of the middleman. I think that's what, you know, when I hear decentralization, that's kind of what comes to me. Um, and when you think of public equity, so DTCC in the US sits in the middle and serves as that central counterparty and that securities depository, basically that third party trusted uh, entity between buyers and sellers. So when I think of decentralization, it, it's how can we maintain that trustworthiness without that third party involved. Right. Um, so what else do you, um, so other than um, we try to decentralize the platform to remove that trust that comes with the benefit of, um, you know, trusting, I guess, peer to peer trust, right? That's what we want to do with decentralization. So how about the security? Bo, when you want to chime me on the security element and why decentralization is more, is better? Yeah, so as Miko mentioned before, so many of the decentralized exchange, well, it's a bad word. So many of the wallet-to-wallet -wallet dis uh, exchange actually let the user hold their own assets. I'm going to ask how many audience has a BitSum account here? Uh, show of hands, so if you have a BitSum uh, account. Um, well, that may be a 10%. So congratulations, the rest of the 90%, you didn't get hacked. Uh, so for the central exchange, um, basically every central exchange has the possibility to be hacked. Let's go back to 2013, which the Mountain Gauss hacks. Let's go back to 2016, which is, uh, which is the BitPhoenix. And let's go back to this year beginning. It's the Binance hack. It's the CoinRail hack. It's the BitSum hack. So uh, with every uh, central exchange get hacked, the, the, uh, the crypto uh, market uh, drops within the price and also within the liquidity. So uh, with, with that being said, so only the asset that holds on the users with their own private key uh, is 100% safe since we don't put all the eggs in the one basket. So uh, that's, I think, the one of the most advantage for what we call the wallet-to-wallet -wallet trading. Uh, and I think that's the future of the exchange. Great. Yeah, so I guess Coben Hood and uh, Unchained, they're both centralized exchanges. So I'll let you guys chime in. Okay, so uh, basically I think uh, the centralized exchange have been hacked due to the different reasons. And I think, uh, I'm not sure everyone have some technical background, but uh, for an exchange, they're trying to integrate new chains. And most exchange uh, only care about the speed, how soon they can integrate a new chain. So they just integrate with other extended, uh, ex existing nodes. So uh, when, an, when a centralized integrate their uh, didn't fully develop their own phone node, that means they stored their private key on others' node. So, uh, and that's the reason why Cobin Hood always uh, de uh, develop our own phone node, and we will store our own private key in our own phone node. So, uh, I think that's a way to uh, make the centralized exchange more secure. And the second point is uh, uh, for Cobin Hood, uh, we hire a, a world white hat hacker uh, team to hack, a uh, world champion white hat hacker team to hack our exchange like every day. Because uh, we believe they're still, uh, for a software engineering, they always have bugs. So we're trying to find those bugs to locate this, uh, those bugs 
in a controllable situation, so we can fix the bug like uh, once we find them and in the controllable situation. Uh, since I'm uh, not a uh, technical background, so I just share some uh, information with you. Uh, well, people always think that decentralized exchange may be uh, safer than centralized, but actually, just as our guest just mentioned, there are many uh, bad things or safety issues happens uh, last several years. But I would say that uh, depends. I mean, it have different kinds of safety issues. I should divide it into several parts. Some are inner things, some are outer things, some are because of the uh, customers or users, their own fault. Some are, yeah, they do the fault, uh, I mean, belongs to the operators. So we need to first divide it, uh, which, uh, who should be responsible for this kind of safety reasons. And also, uh, people always say, uh, you have different handle uh, methods in different period. I mean, uh, if we can control the safety risk at the first stage, that will, much, that will be much better uh, when you handle, I mean, bad things happen as a result, that uh, will be not the good. I mean, uh, the first for inner, we need to use stricter rules uh, and regulations for our own staff. And actually, there are there are these some uh, uh, bad things happens because of the inner uh, rules are not that strict. So, you know, some teams, they just think this industry has a lot of money. So they jump from other industry to this industry and they don't have enough experience. So maybe some uh, corruption things may happen. That is a, a disaster. And also the outer part, we need to collaborate with some, I mean, safety companies and especially like use, you know, there are some uh, uh, Chinese traditional safety company, they help use to find some bugs. I mean, this kind of collaboration with other partners can also help us enhance the safety. Yeah. So in my opinion, the biggest safety concerns has to be custodianship. That's where the money is stored. Um, so right now we have two solutions. One is, uh, you know, the exchanges, uh, they custom, uh, they custodian their own uh, assets. Another option is, guess, you, you use smart contract uh, for, to replace uh, existing um, centralized custodian solution. Or, um, Miko, do you want to chime in on your opinion on custodianship and what, that, what the current state is, what the problems are, and where do you think it's going to go? Yeah, so uh, it's my opinion that this topic is complex of exchange. And so I think people get confused about what matters. And I can tell you what matters. What matters is the location and ownership of your private key. So if you are involved at all in crypto assets, really, if you're not paying attention to where your private key is, you just lost all your money. So to me, that's the topic of custody, right? You either own your private key or you own nothing. And you've just given away all your power. So to me, the thing that we are missing in crypto is a legal definition of custody. Since we have no legal definition of custody, we have to fall back to the technical definition of custody. And the technical definition of custody is the person who owns the private key owns the asset, full stop. If you do not own your private key, you do not own your asset, full stop. That's you mean the all topic. The, uh, all the centralized exchanges own your asset. So the point is exactly that, right? Which is I don't like the phrase centralized exchange because the topic I'd like to talk about is custodial exchange. So a custodial exchange owns your asset and they own your private key. Now, most so-called centralized exchanges are custodial. But to me, I think, if you remember, I gave a talk this morning about the banks and centralized banks and the weakness of banks, right? Why are we recreating institutions that are actually worse than the banks of today? Because they don't even have a legal recourse, right? So we're giving our assets to one party and we don't even have a legal recourse. At least with a bank, you have FDIC insurance, and then you have legal recourse, right? With the exchanges that are custodial today, you have no legal recourse, and you have no technical recourse. Therefore, why are we doing this? Why are we, why are we piling all our assets in a third party? Satoshi did not want us to do this. Yeah, I, I would add on to that, and, and I think all of us here on this panel have a decision to make as, is, do we want to be an exchange trading platform or do we want to be a custodian? 
because there are very different regulatory requirements for both of them, and being a custodian requires uh, significant capital uh, requirements. Um, so for us specifically, we are choosing to not be a custodian, um, and that is really the, one of the biggest barriers to institutional money coming into the space today uh, is what is that custody solution look like? Uh, so Coinbase custody, Anchor, uh, Sterling Trust, or just a handful that we've been speaking with, and I know there are others out there. Uh, so that is something that will be solved soon. Uh, but, but as Miko said, it's a massive part of the equation in scaling the adoption of, of tokenization in, in crypto in general. Thank you. So, um, you know, continuing on the regulation part, um, so right now most exchanges are not regulated. There are a few exchanges in different jurisdictions have a license, um, but majority, you know, 99% of exchanges do not have a license. So you are a licensed decentralized exchange. What, can you tell us what that means? And, uh, you know, you, you are also operating in a very different space than almost all the rest of exchange. You're doing security tokens. I think maybe spend a bit of time telling us what security tokens are and what, you know, what does that license mean, you know, to be a first licensed security exchange. Sure. Uh, yeah, just a little backdrop on us. So we've been operational for the past four years as a, a trading platform for illiquid non-listed securities in the U.S. So primarily uh, securities that file exemptions under securities law with the SEC is Reg D, Reg S, Reg CF, and Reg A plus securities. Uh, so we've been approved to trade those securities electronically. We have a broker-dealer license. Uh, we've just upgraded that broker-dealer license to uh, an ATS, which is Alternative Trading System. Uh, so that allows us to basically pipe our order book into other broker-dealers. Um, so first and foremost, you know, compliance and, and regulatory uh, concerns are, are the priority for our business, given that we are dealing in actual securities as defined by the SEC. Um, so there are a handful of other entities that are looking to enter the space. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of T0. Uh, we believe that they're looking to play in more of the public equity space, uh, whereas our background is in the kind of alternative asset, the private placement space. And we think that the great opportunity is, is not o only future issuances of, as Miko said earlier, asset-backed tokens, um, you know, also referred to as security tokens, uh, so new entities doing that, but also the opportunity to bring uh, existing alternative assets on chain. Uh, so issuers that, you know, whether it's a private equity fund or a venture fund or a real estate fund, uh, bringing the administration of that on chain uh, and, and reflecting the ownership of that security in the form of a digital token as opposed to a binder full of paper uh, makes that much more liquid uh, and opens up massive pools of capital to those issuers. I have, I have a comment on regulation. So as soon as people talk about regulated exchange, they're very focused on securities laws, which I think are ambiguous and very different from state to state. I think the laws of regulation that are uniform and very strong are anti-money laundering. And I think this is a completely different topic if the SEC, the worst thing that the SEC can do is lose somebody's investment. That's the biggest harm, right? If you look at FinCEN, which is the regulator in charge of KYC and AML, the worst thing that can happen are the worst things that can happen to a human being, right? We're talking about terrorist financing, criminal financing, drug trafficking, human trafficking, assassinations, murders, Right, so, so AML is going to be non-negotiable. So all exchanges will be subject to anti-money laundering, which is why I believe that pure play anonymous decentralized exchanges will disappear or go underground, because I think that AML is when the guns come out. I think the but governments of the world will not allow anonymous exchange but or can privacy they? Coins. I mean, can they regulate? Can they force them go, go away? Because they are decentralized. So tech, if they are truly decentralized, running on a completely decentralized infrastructure, no one can actually shut them down. So quick retort. Uh, if you look at what happened to uh, the decentralized music exchange, right, I think, 
you know, anyone defying the law, like Napster, which was centralized, was of course immediately destroyed. But if you look at the suppression effort against BitTorrent, BitTorrent continues to function, but it's not the winner, right? So I believe that the governments of the world will be able to suppress and reduce the efficacy of anonymous decentralized exchange. And the killer app for anonymous decentralized exchange is money laundering. So I think that they will be able to suppress those exchanges to the point where other exchanges will win. Yeah, uh, I want to echo to Miko. Uh, basically, I think the the concept of uh, the concept of regulation is conflict to the blockchain concept. But uh, I think the because uh, if we do the an, uh, anonymous exchange, that uh, ML is like uh, the money laundry will become the extremely easy for those criminals or terrorists. But uh, so I think maybe the another another problem for the regulation is, for example, we operate globally, so we need to we need to apply Japanese license and uh, money trust uh, money transmitter license in the U.S. and also uh, the license in EU. But for uh, I think if they if we keep this route, uh, if we keep this path, then uh, the exchange. A crypto exchange will ultimately come to something like uh, Shanghai Stock Exchange, Taipei Stock Exchange. They will be local. So I think maybe the government should like have a community like uh, Yuan and trying to long, uh, giving out some certificate like uh, ML certificate. So. Uh, a crypto exchange doesn't need to be limited in some location only. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here I want to add more things about the regulation. Well, uh, I will admit that all the exchange, maybe including uh, a decentralized or centralized, need to welcome the regulation. Uh, the anti-money laundry, as you just said, and also the you know a lot of bad things need to be regulated. But still, I want to emphasize that. Uh, nowadays, some governments are trying to compare, I mean, the laws, they are, laws, they are existing almost uh, 70 or even more times, uh, my own years, but the tokens and the uh, ICO and all these new concepts just come out these years. So, I mean, the laws, they have a, a big age, like 10 years, uh, more than 10 years, but the industry is new. So if we this, always want to try to compare these two things, there will be some inharmony happens. So, I mean, uh, no matter centralized or decentralized uh, uh, company or exchange, they are planning to make their business more uh, transparent for a uh, community or for normal public to be involved. So I think maybe in the future regulation uh, structures, the com community can play a more important role in that. So I don't know whether uh, everybody knows, but uh, there are a lot of talks about centralized exchange are thinking about decentralizing some of some part of their technology infrastructure or the governance. So we have uh, Huobi Exchange having their own chain, uh, launch their, announce their own chain, Binance launched their own chain. We just spoke to uh, uh, Daniel, we just heard Col Colbin Hood is having their own chain um, with the purpose of building their own decentralized exchange in the future. So I'm really curious to hear uh, what do you guys think? You know, as centralized exchange, where are you going to go? How decentralized do you want to be? Like, how much of the technology you want to incorporate to improve your current um, technology or infrastructure? Okay, uh, I think by now most people would choose uh, centralized exchange rather than decentralized exchange. It's because of uh, user experience. Because uh, I'm not sure, like, uh, everyone tried to buy some token on the Ether Delta, and it's way too hard for non-tech background people. Because the it's like better, very, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like extremely complex. So that's the reason the, that's the reason why people are choosing the centralized exchange because it's it has much better user experience. Uh -huh. And the reason why we're trying to develop our own chain and our own chain, uh, our own chain is called Dexon and uh, the, uh, your, uh, our website is Dexon.io. 
Yep. So uh, basically, we what we aim to is uh, we aim to create a decentralized platform and able to handle the Facebook level transaction. And that means that uh, once we uh, once our chain is ready, then we can provide a decentralized exchange uh, with the centralized exchange experience. Yep. So. Basically, that's what we aim for, and that's why uh, Huobi or uh, Binance aim for too. Yep. So uh, I believe this is a chain, and for the upside for the decentralized uh, exchange is more uh, transparent, because like uh, I'm not sure everyone knows uh, the Bphoenix roll out the USDT. Yeah, and people are always questioning you. Uh, the Phoenix are using the money to like uh, pump and dump bitcoins or other stuff. Uh, once the Phoenix become a decentralized exchange, so everyone can check their asset on chain, so everything goes transparent. So I want to add something like. Uh, we might be realists right now. So 99% of the market is eaten by centralized exchanges. And uh, so they're gain, gaining the profits, they're gaining the users. And uh, of course, they can use this resource, just like you told, to uh, apply some decentralized technologies for the user experience of their own product. And uh, I think this is like the future of exchanges. And also, uh, my view is that uh, decentralized uh, uh, exchange and centralized, they are now the relationship of the replace. I mean, they will both exist for quite a long time because uh, they both have an advantage that the other cannot uh, take over. And also, just like Daniel just mentioned, some big players like Huobi or Binance, they start from the centralized exchange, and then they uh, try to develop their own decentralized. And then they would like to uh, develop their own chain or even build some more things. So I mean, this is a step by step. You cannot just jump to the final destination. It's not cool. So I mean, uh, they will both exist for quite a long time. I guess my view goes back again to we've already seen an entire life cycle of digital asset exchange. The place where we've seen it happen is in music, right? So what I talked about with Napster, like the end game for the music exchange is Spotify which is a legally compliant centralized exchange with a very good user experience that takes fees, right? People are willing to pay the fee because they're getting a good user experience. And I think that is where the game goes. I think that not only do people reason badly about centralized versus decentralized, which by the way is not meaningful. The topic that's the most meaningful is where is your key, right? If you lose your key, you're done. And people are really getting confused about, I like decentralized, I like centralized. It doesn't mean anything. If you lost your key, you're done. So to me, I don't want to confuse people. Keep track of your key. But the point I would make is, is centralized exchange can still have a non-custodial component. So to me, you know, as a founder of Evercoin Exchange, I feel like that's our model is centralized non-custodial exchange. I think is where it happens. The last point on this is people don't understand liquidity. When you really look at, take a look at an exchange, like I had dinner with the CEO of ICE, which runs the New York Stock Exchange. He's the chairman of the New York Stock Exchange. The New York Stock Exchange is basically run on a rack of servers. There's actually someone who's rented an adjacent rack of servers, and they actually have liquid nitrogen crossbar that allows them to use superconductivity to cross the 36 inches between the racks, right? This is because the speed of light travels one foot every nanosecond. If you want to talk about centralized exchange, decentralized exchanges have a speed of light problem. And once you get liquidity and you get mass scale liquidity and high frequency trading, you're actually going to see all the trading edge go central. And really, all that's going to be left out in decentralized exchange are going to be like anonymous pirates and hackers and, and money launderers. So I'm going to have to give the time to uh, Bowen and uh, Tolfen <laughs> after uh, the other, uh, you know, four panelists' um, you know comments. What do you, Bowen? What do you, um, 
What are you yeah. thinking? So uh, thanks, Daniel mentioned about Ether Delta. So um, I, I, I guess like um, there's no not a lot of people who actually use Ether Delta before, but um, Ether Delta used to have like $20 million transaction. It is the worst user experience exchange on the world. Um, but why people are still using that? Because people want to make profit. So people don't go to exchange because the user experience is awesome. This is because two things. One is what Miko mentioned. They have like a really strong liquidity mandate for people to buy and sell. The second is they have the, uh, they have the category or the, the asset or the token they want to trade. So uh, different from many of the centralized exchange uh, operator or owner thinks, so decentralized exchange actually has a lot of volumes on top of it because of the token generation. So there's more than 80K ERC20 token were generated in the last 12 months, and the one of the most listed exchange only have 300 of them. So you can see there's 99% of the token listing, uh, token pair that people want to trade are not listing on central exchange. So that's kind of a different criteria and different market. So it's basically central exchange is more like a blue chip company, but they still have like a, a startup portion that people want to trade on the uh, on the category. That's a great answer. So, Tobin, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think that my esteemed co-panelist covered pretty much everything there is to cover on that. Next topic. <laughs> Can I jump in on that DEX yeah. thing, though, right? Which is, if you think about 80,000 tokens, you're talking about the longest of the long tail, right? You're talking about things with daily trading volumes of, like, $60, right? This is dangerous stuff. Right? If you have something with a daily trading volume of $60, you can artificially pump and dump that to, you know, left and right, up and down. So to me, like rational traders should stay out of this long tail of exchangeable assets because those things are so easily manipulated. So I, I think that's a dangerous area. But, uh, but what is manipulation? If I think it's the right price, I will buy. If I think, if I think if it's the right price, I will sell. If I have the need to get rid of the something or buy something, I have to go to a place where it can offer me that service. If that service is not provided by a centralized exchange, I will have to go to another place who offer that service. Yeah, right? but I guess that's a nice view and a nice libertarian view, but it really doesn't take into account like fraud and manipulation. It right? doesn't Which matter. Is, you can manipulate all you want, but if the price is right, I'll buy it. And if price is wrong, you know, I will just hold. Or you that's can go to an aggregator demanded. actually of exchanges and just find the token there. Sorry? Or you can just go to the aggregator of exchange, like yeah, centralized exactly. or I can go to you. You have to integrate there, so. whoever can uh, give me that liquidity. Yeah, so, but, uh, yeah, but uh, I think another point to think of the question is why those tokens haven't been accepted to list on centralized exchange. Because uh, by now, there are more than 2,000 centralized exchanges. Because centralized exchange have to make money, and you make a decision by, you know, whether this token can make you money. If the liquidity is so low, you can't make money. Why would you accept it? I wouldn't accept it because I'm a business, right? Yeah, but yeah. Uh, another point of the why the centralized exchange are so picky, I would say there are a lot of uh, exchange are actually charging a lot for token listing, but not us. And another point is that we will uh, always like uh, review very deeply to those token trying to list on our exchange. And the reason is, uh, last year there, uh, there have a US uh, TV celebrity, they wrote out his own token. And during that time, the, the uh, Ether price is around 200, and his token's price is like 1,200 or something. And his uh, market cap is higher, it, it's even, sometimes it's even higher than Ether, but which is, there's zero uh, exchange are actually trading this kind of token. So uh, the celebrity just like keep pumping his token price and met everyone thinks, oh, oh my God, this is like third or second large cryptocurrency in the world, but which is not true. So I think that's the situation that we, uh, our exchange trying to prevent, you know, this kind of situation happens. That is exactly why we need decentralized exchange, because <laughs> we don't want a, cent a person to make that decision for us, right? So now you are being the big brother and making the decision for me, while I just want to get rid of this token or buy this token, right? 
But anyways, um, I had this, I mean, I'm fully, of course, um, we're working the blockchain space. Like I, you know, from, you know, my, I guess my point of view, like I really see a huge need for decentralization where not a central body to make a decision what can be listed, what cannot be listed. As soon as something needs liquidity, there has to be a place for it to be traded. So if decentralized exchange doesn't want to, for whatever reason, then I think, you know, that's why I think decentralized exchange will always be there. It's just my point of view. But we only have five minutes left. I would love to uh, focus the last five minutes on liquidity, because I think that's something very interesting. Right now, um, as Pavel pointed out, 90% of the liquidity or 99% of the liquidity is on centralized exchange. So what can we do to help, you know, drive liquidity to, to you know, more decentralized exchanges, or even smaller centralized exchanges, right, to even the playing field a bit. What do you guys think that in the future, majority of the liquidity will go to one of the, you know, top five, and all the smaller ones will be consolidated, and, you know, they will only serve certain purposes in smaller markets. Like, I would love to see, to kind of, maybe each one of you give us like a minute or 30 seconds view on, um, you know, in six months or 12 months' time, where do you think the market will be? Sure. Want to, Mikko, we, we do advice. Yeah, yeah. so uh, my, my prognostication on the future of exchanges, I definitely think centralized non-custodial exchange will be the dominant paradigm for exchange. I think liquidity is going to be central bank scale liquidity, and I think investment bank scale liquidity. I don't think very many people in crypto are reasoning about how big the liquidity will be, and I think DEX will continue to be a rounding error. It will continue to be very small. Even, even when the speed of uh, blockchain will dramatically increase? Yeah, because what happens with this phenomenon is trading edge goes towards centralized exchange because of the flash boys. So there'll be extremely fast trading happening, and all the profit will go to the people who are centralized and going fast. The people who are going slow on the periphery are just going to lose money. Uh, actually, it's a little dangerous to do a uh, make uh, forecast. Actually, there are some uh, sad stories in the history that people make forecast, especially for blockchain industry, because everything changed so fast. But I think uh, for uh, half a year, uh, I believe that the centralized uh, exchange still will be play the dominant players uh, in the market. And also, as far as we know, that uh, there's a uh, exchange named Fcoin, it jumps to the world's first volume in terms of, vol of volume just within one month. So I believe uh, in six months later, uh, or between these six months, there will be, will be other some newcomers, and they have their own ways to play the game, and they will jump to a very top, maybe the first one or the second one, and give us a new fresh. Yeah. Uh, so I think that the, um, in the future, the things will remain the same, more or less. So uh, just because the penetration rate of the crypto is still very low, so people are not like looking for the centralized solutions rather than just where to buy Bitcoin. And it's really simple for them to go to the centralized exchanges. Centralized exchanges are going to apply some technologies of the centralized ones, just like you told, so uh, putting some things on chain and uh, uh, giving the private keys for the users in some cases and stuff like this. But the winning model for me actually is the aggregator of exchanges. So this is like uh, not pitching, but uh, we see this in each and every industry, in each and every niche. So aggregation of others is winning. Okay, uh, I want to like add some more about the liquidity. And I think that, uh, because by now, uh, most of the token that we can get right now, they just finished their ICO. So, but don't forget the reason they're trying to do an ICO. They're trying to create their own ecosystem. So uh, another main part for the token liquidity, I would, I would say uh, it's from their own ecosystem. Yeah. So, and for the future for the uh, cryptocurrency exchange, I would say uh, for the next six months, there might be more and more hybrid exchange. Like uh, they trying to uh, approve they are uh, like some sort of like custodian, but they are not really finding a bank to do the custodian. But uh, they are trying to approve they, uh, the 100% of users' assets are really 
in or somehow to approve. Uh, they didn't move any, uh, they, they didn't try to use the user's asset on other uh, exchange or other purpose. Yeah. Great. Uh, I would say that the, the regulatory environment will determine how decentralized uh, an exchange can become. Specifically, specifically for us, as we deal with very antiquated securities laws in the U.S., it's like we're fitting the, the round peg into the square hole. Uh, so until we get either updated regulation or more clarity on the regulatory uh, environment, it's going to be very difficult to determine how decentralized we can be just based on some of the things that, that the panel has mentioned, custody, AML, KYC, et cetera. Uh, regarding liquidity, you know, for us specifically, we're dealing in a, a brand new uh, you know, era with the, the tokenization of, of uh, securities and existing uh, uh, assets. So we've been laser focused on the inventory, um, working with the issuance platforms like Harbor, Securitize, Polymath, uh, entering into partnerships with them to bring quality projects onto the platform with the belief that if there's quality inventory there, uh, buyers will uh, will come. Yeah, um, I'm going to make two pr predictions. So one is that there's going to be more exchange got hacked within six months. And the second one, I, I believe that not custodian uh, hybrid exchange, which has the same centralized exchange um, place and cancel order speed, uh, will be the future of the exchange. Great. Um, I like um, I like the last thing. No, I think uh, I kind of I kind of I think we all kind of agree there will be a hybrid model that will emerge and taking the best from both worlds. So uh, hopefully you all enjoyed uh, today's conversation. It's a long panel. Hopefully you haven't been bored. So um, if you haven't used a decentralized exchange, we encourage everybody to try, and please continue to. Uh, follow this interesting and fast moving space. And next year when we meet again, we'll have a, another um, evaluation and to see which panelists here have made the right prediction. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.